What's up, guys? How's it going? Welcome back to Real Simple Mushrooms, where we help to simplify home mushroom cultivation. Happy New Year. Happy 5,000 subs. I hit that last night, which is super just epic to do that on New Year's Eve. Um, that definitely made my day. Thanks to all of you for following along and all the great comments and interaction I've gotten. It really makes all this kind of worth it. Um, if you haven't yet, go check out my Patreon. Links in the description. Doing some cool stuff over there. Giveaways or some other great benefits. Um, some videos you won't find here. Um, so yeah, go check that out. Links down there. Anyway, enough about that. Today's topic we're going to jump right into is embedded bacteria. What is it? How to identify it? And what we can do about it? So are you still being plagued by like bacterial spawn, even though you're following proper sterile technique, you're sterilizing your grains properly, but you're still getting contamination and you can't figure out where it's coming from? Chances are your agar culture probably has a little bit of embedded bacteria with it. Um, how can you tell? Uh, well, this is a really extreme case. Um, you're looking for a faint halo around your mycelium, right? This is a really extreme case. Usually it's not that evident. It's usually like a, maybe like a millimeter past the outer leading edge of your mycelium. Um, it's kind of shiny. It's reflective when you shine it in the lights. Chances are, if you see that, you've got a little bit of embedded bacteria. You'll still get fruits with that stuff sometimes if it's not too bad, but it can get out of hand pretty quick. Okay, guys, real quick before I get into these techniques, let me just show you the difference between a clean plate and a couple plates that I suspect to be contaminated. That way you kind of know what to look for. Okay, now here's a clean plate. Notice how clearly defined the leading edge of the mycelium is. There's no halo, no glow, no sheen. Um, now compare that to these plates. Notice the difference between the two. So this is what you're looking for. And this is really what you're going to see that the plate I showed you in the intro is kind of an extreme example. This is normally what you'd be looking for. Um, this is a clone. Cloning is not a sterile process. Sometimes some bacteria gets carried along. This is where a lot of that stuff will come from, actually. Um, so you'll just see that little halo around the mycelium. That's what we're looking to um, separate and isolate. Okay, so you definitely have verified, you know, you got that halo. So now what? How do you clean it up, right? You've, you've tried regular agar transfers. You've transferred two, three, four times. You still have it. Uh, you've tried water agar. It's still creeping along. Well, I'm going to go over a couple of a little bit more advanced techniques uh, that you can use that have great success with fewer transfers. Uh, and that's what we're going to cover today. So without further ado, let's get into it and let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that you've checked out your plates and you think you've got some embedded bacteria on them, what's next, right? What do I do? I've tried everything. Uh, these two techniques we're going to go over today are called sequestering and trapdoor method. <clears throat> Basically, bacteria moves through moisture and liquid. Um, if you look at bacteria under a microscope, in a microscope slide, you'll see little worm-like organisms swimming along, right? And that's how it moves. That's how it spreads. Um, and that's why it's really, really important to clean or to dry your grains properly uh, when you're, you're doing your grain spawn because, you know, that's how this, the bacteria spreads through your grain spawn too. Um, so basically what we're trying to do here is create some kind of physical barrier that the mycelium can traverse, but the bacteria cannot, right? So first we're going to go over what is called sequestering or trenching. Uh, just kind of like the name implies what we're going to do is we're going to put a, uh, a piece of that contaminated, a sample of that contaminated culture on a little island, right? We're gonna we're gonna take a hot scalpel and we're gonna carve a trench on our agar plate, and we're gonna drop a sample on there and sequester it, um, isolate it, and basically the idea behind this is that the hyphae from the mycelium will just jump straight across the trench where you can grab a clean sample on the other side, leaving the bacteria behind. So with your work surface, you know, prepped and cleaned and sterile, and your plate's ready to go, sterilize your scalpel. Now using the hot blade, just carve a U-shaped trench on one end of the plate and then put the lid back on it. Now you're gonna take your suspected contaminated plate and using a flame sterilized scalpel again, take a sample transfer from the leading edge, 
and then quickly and smoothly place that sample on that little island you created uh, inside the trench. Now again, the idea behind this is that the, the mycelium is just going to jump across that trench and you'll be able to grab a clean sample uh, without the bacteria. So here's some plates I did three weeks ago. As you can see, the mycelium had no issue crossing that barrier and you can see how clean that leading edge is now. Now I'll take my transfers back to another clean plate. For me, just because I like to be extra sure, I'll make a transfer to a water agar plate first. Then once that grows out, I'll grab a transfer back to a nutritious agar and then continue using that culture. All right, so that brings me to our second method today, and that is called the trap door method. And just like that name applies, what we're going to do is we're going to cut a flap in our agar, a door. And then we're going to take a contaminated sample and we're going to put it right underneath that flap, sandwich in the mycelium. And then the mycelium is going to grow straight through the agar where I can snag a clean sample off without any bacteria. Pretty genius, right? Mycelium is pretty resilient. It's crazy how this stuff grows. So you're going to need two scalpels to do this. Um, so make sure your work area is clean and ready to work. Flame sterilize both your scalpels. Using the first scalpel, cut a large V-shaped slice into the agar. And set that plate aside. Using that same scalpel, make a small leading edge transfer from your contaminated plate. Now grab your second clean scalpel with your other hand. Gently lift that flap up. You just cut and place the sample underneath with the mycelium facing upward and sandwich it between the agar. Now as you can see, the mycelium would just grow straight through the agar. You can then grab a clean sample to transfer to another plate. Here's a couple more plates I did and the transfers I took from them. As you can see, they're growing out great. They look nice and clean. So that's it. They're pretty two simple and effective methods in, in dealing with embedded bacteria. Um, so yeah, let me know uh, in the comments your experience on it. Um, if you try it, let me know. Let me know if you've had success with it, uh, if you have any other questions. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining along. Um, my channel's growing really fast. I'm super stoked about it, and it's all because of you guys. Um, if you're not following my Patreon, go check it out. Links are in the description. It's free to join. Got a lot of cool stuff going on over there. Giveaways, contests, things like that. Um, and thanks, guys. Happy New Year. Much love. Uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.